Welcome back to Protected Trust Live. My name is Steve Goodman, Training Coordinator at Protected Trust. Joining me again today is Ingram Leedy as we reach step three or step pillar. <laughs> pillar number three. Or no, it's pillar number... Yeah, it's pillar well, number three. I don't three. really number them. They're just name something. This okay. Is, this would be fixing your... Of our, of our six-part series yes. of uh, creating the modern office. Yeah. Hi, for, Stephen. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, remember to join us every Tuesday and Thursday at 2.30 where we do this. And um, today's topic is replacing the file server. And we try to help other people by explaining our story yeah. of our office. Maybe just real quickly we could pop this screen up on the on the computer here and just show people kind of our six six pillars. Where we've been. Yeah, and so where we went, we, we covered the wireless. Um, uh, on Tuesday we talked about upgrading your computers. Um we felt like we could have gone uh, deeper maybe into that. Um, and I think we will as we um, work on these series more and more. But um, today we're going to talk about the uh, replacing your file server and what that meant to us. And um, it's kind of a very common problem with a lot of people um, and a lot of clients that we work with. So I think we're going to focus on it. If it bleeds into something else, it does, right? Because this whole area is all related. Um, and so I, but I think replacing file server is the way you get into it. Well, it was the, it was the next step in our internal offices journey to creating yeah, the was. modern office, it right? Was. So that's how these were all laid out. And so we were trying to take them one by one. So how did we get to the point or how did, how did you get to the point yeah. where you said you had enough of the file server and you yeah. said you needed well, a change? Yeah, we've had a file server for, for, I can't remember how long, forever. And, um, you know, you know, if we have corporate documents, we put them on this group drive um, file server. Um, you know, there was a time we worried about, like, was it was it redundant? Was it backed up? And so we invested in this file server and put more servers together. And then uh, the server, then we were putting everything out on the servers. And then the servers got filled up. And then you had to buy more storage and more servers. And it just got really complicated. Um, another thing about it is I never... I, like when I would go at home or I uh, was off site, maybe on vacation or just somewhere else, and I wanted to get to any of those files, uh, it's just like a VPN had to be set up, and it's a whole other set of credentials and just a, a whole bunch of complexity to get to a file. And then even if I get to the file, then it's, you know, it's just the experience wasn't really um, fun. And, um, and it wasn't reliable. It wasn't reliable, yeah. It just, it's so much has changed since we hit what we, we what we're doing today than what was we're doing. It just it's so much better. Um, are, are you finding yeah. it hard to <laughs> to remember it, what it, it was is. like? It I is, don't I don't want to remember because I'm I'm trying to like remember what it was and or how it was like and it was yeah we would have people complaining all the time that uh, I can't connect to the file server and yeah. like it, is, is can you connect to it? This person can connect to it, yeah. but how come I can't connect to it? And yeah. so we'd always be spending a lot of time and a lot of resources trying to remember. Or not trying to rem not trying to remember, but trying to resolve the issue yeah. so that it works across the board. And like you said, if you weren't in the office, that adds just another complexity to it because you had to have a VPN client mm -hmm. in order to get to the file server. Yeah. So it was just complexity, and it wasn't very reliable, and it was it was a dark time. It was a dark time, <laughs> but it, but it was the only thing we had it, at the time. It makes difficult sharing files difficult too, because you're or editing or changing files because um, you know you have all these permission things. You got to worry about who can access what. Um, you know, if you overwrite a file, then that file is overwritten. You would probably have to go to a backup. Mm -hmm. hopefully a backup that exists right and then try to recover on that backup and you know I've, you've heard the whole thing if you go to your backups you know there's like a maybe a 50 percent chance that the backup actually works mm -hmm. um so all those criteria were going on in our minds of like you know this stuff is really holding a lot of valuable information that's also making it really hard to share that information so again we thought there's got to be a better way and we're using all these new technologies we're using microsoft 365 and um yeah um, you know, we learned that there's a new way to doing these things. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things we implemented was, um, I call it OneDrive SharePoint, because uh, OneDrive and SharePoint are two technology that Microsoft um, has developed that, um, you know, have two different kind of uh, viewpoints, um, how you use it. OneDrive is more personalized file system, and then SharePoint is more like a company directory thing. Right. And I tried touching upon this on one of our earlier live streams when I was doing them solo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where people can remember uh, having, or people probably still do have an H drive or an I drive. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, these are where I store the documents that I'm working on now just for myself. Um, and I guess that would be the, the H drive or the, 
iDrive. Well, I mean, you can name it anything you want. It's just that... I thought there was like a universal... I think anybody, they name them sort of really? like they want. The Z drive, the H That's drive, true. the I drive. So, um, so people know that they go and they open up their Windows uh, File Explorer and they can see that, oh, this is where I go where I need to back up a file I'm working on or this is where I need to go to cause if it... If it's the whole company needs to uh, access this file, right? And so that's the difference between OneDrive and SharePoint. Yeah, I, I give the analogy, and we've talked about this before. Is like I call it the if you're kind of related back to the physical world, it's um, it's like having a filing cabinet in the middle of your office. It's a place where everybody can access it. Um, you may have segmentation in those files, like keys and locks for different departments, mm -hmm. but everything's stored in a centralized location for everyone to access in a sense. Um, and then the OneDrive would be like having the file system or the file cabinet under your desk. It's your personal desk, personal files, and you organize it the way you want, where the company has a more organized um, or kind of a corporate structure or data governance, as we'd call it, as we, um, another path we went down to try to figure out how to, how's the best way to organize this information. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I kind of wish that when I was starting out that there was a class on how to organize files. You know, like, uh, you, know, you, you learn some basic things about business, but, you know, how to how to organize your file system how to organize your um your departments um you know you kind of start off small but you know if you don't keep up with it it kind of get out of control so it snowballs yeah, really it's quickly. A snowball so maybe we'll do a, a talk on that yeah, on, <laughs> once on, we figure it out on better later. management yeah. of your files <laughs> yeah well it's called data governance and it's a big topic out there and it has to do with data governance and the way you handle security but it's a good topic to probably talk about at some point okay but we're not there not yet. today <laughs> not today okay so Tell me about how the transition went internally in the office. So you said, mm -hmm. everyone, we're getting rid of this yeah. file server. We're doing, we're going to the next yeah. level. Yeah, uh, it was. It's difficult because a lot of people were using the file server, mm -hmm. and getting people to switch to something new is change, and they don't like change. And so um, it was um, difficult to get people to get on board with the idea. Um, and you know, telling about the features or the benefits of it were. You know, yeah, okay, I hear you, but it wasn't like, you know, yeah, let's go, let's race to do this. So it did take some time, but it really took people in our organization that would be um, uh, champions of it, that, that believed in it too. So um, in our group, we took areas, departments that um, championed the ideas, and we took a department at a time, a, a group of five or six people, and moved them to give them the ability to clean up their, their current group's drive or H drive, and then move it over to... Um, uh, SharePoint is what we moved to. Yeah, that's what I found fascinating about uh, when, when we go to client sites and we do this for them. It's like mm -hmm. even though their existing file server has treated them so poorly, change is just a big no-no in yeah. their organization. Yeah. So they they will be willing to sometimes be able to access their files, go through VPNs to access their files, yeah. all because of the word change. It's like yeah. I have to do one, maybe not one thing, but I have to follow a few simple steps. But once they're on board, they're like, "Oh, yeah. Why wasn't I doing this? Before? Why was Why wasn't yeah. I doing? This? That's why. What we were saying before, um, it's hard to remember yeah. back that far long ago because yeah. everything just works now. I mean, the thing about the the most favorite thing about the whole thing is um, is accessing OneDrive from this or SharePoint from this. Yes. Um, and just yesterday, I was at um, um, uh, someone's office, and I had a, I had a file that I had been working on on my computer, a Word document. And I was like, you know, in the past, I would have had, okay, hey, I'll get back to you. I'll go back to my office. I go to my computer, pull up Word, get the file, send it by email. And, you know, in some cases, you know, might have to even print it out or do something with it. But with this, it's like I click a couple, all my files are right there. I click the button. I hit say or share. I can either share a copy of what's in my system to them, which is something we can talk about, or I can just send them a copy of this file. Um, in the case of where I'm just sharing it, um, and even internally in our organization, we end up sharing files, and um, instead of emailing them, we're sharing kind of the reference or the link to the file. And what it gives us the ability to do is then co-author on a file, which is a whole new world to us of how you can collaborate on a file. So um, just like in Word, you and I could I could share a Word file with you. That's something I'm working on. You'll get a copy of it, open it up in your Word, and boom, you and I are like looking at the same Word document. You're typing something, I'm typing something. The little cursor shows that you're typing something, I'm typing something, and we could get on the phone or get on Skype and collaborate on this document and say, hey, this is what this should say, or this, 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 and this. Right. It's, it's really neat. We, we were talking a little bit earlier about how, um, how much people live inside of Outlook, right? Yeah. That's their go-to. Yeah. And, and it's always been my theory, not proven, but my theory, that the engineers 
are designing all these new applications in Office 365 <laughs> to get people out of Outlook and stop using it and stop abusing it, really. Yeah. Um, uh, well, Outlook, you know, Outlook has been the tool for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, it has been the one tool that has organized people's daily lives. It tells them what they need to be doing, what they're supposed to be doing, where they're supposed to be. You know, I wake up in the morning and check my Outlook. It has my email, has my correspondence, has my calendaring, has all my contacts in it. I mean, it's my life, but it's just for me. It's a personal thing. And it lets me talk to external clients, but um, what it doesn't do very well is help us share as a team. And so working in small groups um, and us sharing files or collaborating on applications, Outlook, um, you get this thread of emails with, you know, like back and forth, back and forth of a file and different copies of a file. What copy of the file are we working on or this idea, which version, this whole threaded thing in the email. They try to fix that with threading an email, but um, new technologies like this um, groups drive, I mean, not the groups drive, but now the, the groups in 365 or OneDrive allow this collaboration to happen with a live document. That's why I bring up Outlook because uh, a lot of people can relate to it. And so when you brought up co-authoring earlier, I was mm -hmm. like, well, why does co-authoring exist? And it mm -hmm. exists because people are emailing the same document yeah. back and forth and oh, I, I can't remember what I did with that yeah. document. Can you resend that document yeah. too? So it fills up the store. And that used to be a big problem um, just a couple of years ago with the file storage capacity of Outlook. Yeah. And you'd always be, we'd always get calls in the support center of people saying, hey, can you bump me up just a little bit oh, more? Bump, bump just bump right? me up, just bump me up a little bit more. Um, My Outlook, is, you know, I, we, we've categorized Outlook users as pilers or filers. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, in my, if you were to look at my Outlook, it's, it's at least, you know, 80,000 items in my inbox. Okay. <laughs> so right. I, I kind of work off the top, you know uh -huh. what I mean? And if, if for some reason it got past the top, you may, may not have gotten your email or I may not recognize your email. Sure. And, and I'm getting a lot of email, so it's really hard for me to process all this. Oh, so that's why you didn't answer me earlier. That's probably why. Yeah. Did you write me? <laughs> yeah, well, I got it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're using the thing. We like internally, we're using Teams now. And we've really embraced Teams a lot mm -hmm. more, and it's really cool because it's like instant messaging and like sharing files, or um, you know, like if I want to pull somebody into like a little small ad hoc meeting, it just all happens right then. You know, and all my files are right there. What we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, Teams is like the, the next iteration of um, Outlook. Of of Outlook, mm -hmm. really, because it's it takes the document storage solution. Mm -hmm. And it puts it all into one thing, but it also adds, it gets rid of the email portion because you can chat with people. So right. if people are familiar with um, the application Slack, um, Teams is uh, Microsoft's version of Slack. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Seth could pull this up on the screen again, but, um, you know, if we're talking about groups again, I, I drew this, this is all, this, this whole document is, I call the back of the napkin um, themes uh, that we've been modeling our, our concepts around, but... Um, this this middle section is I call it 365 groups, but it's really divided into three areas or four areas. Um, you know, in the middle, what we were talking about is OneDrive and SharePoint, and those are where you put all your files. But um, and Outlook is at the bottom. It's the thing you do to talk to internal people and talk, you know, over here talking to internal people or talking to people on the outside, is is Outlook. This has been the workhorse for us for last 20 years mm -hmm. and what we're seeing and then we know we went in there replace our file server so now we can you know share files which is awesome um, but there's these new technologies called teams um, that are happening with and skype for business which allows us to use telephone and um, you know uh, having a traditional phone and using it from my computer or or cellular phone but this all this is merging together this whole thing is merging together um, to be one platform of, of how you work together in a new in a modern office Right. Um, and uh, <laughs> this just hit me right now is that we used to use um, Google um, Google Docs for our migrations. Mm -hmm. um, Isn't we, that kind of funny? Yeah, it's, yeah <laughs> we'd have to use them to do it. But um, this may this may be a long story, but try to try to shorten me up if uh, you try. see me just like, where is he going <laughs> okay. with this? Uh, so when we would do migrations, the entire support team would keep track of which users have been completed for the migration mm -hmm. and we would all access the shared document and we could do it in real time and we, that was it that's the only solution that we mm -hmm. knew of and then we switched to 365 and it's like oh yeah 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 microsoft can do this too why are yeah. you using google to do right. this right and well, one, one thing is our identity is all the same which which is really nice about the microsoft platform is that, and we were talking last time about replacing our Active Directory, mm -hmm. is we replace it with a cloud version of Active Directory that's, um, it protects the identity or our logins, our credentials, and what we're doing. Um, 
in a way where all that works across all the applications. Mm -hmm. And um, later you'll see that well, how why that's so important because now we can determine if your account's being abused or if it's being logged in with trying someone's trying to log into it and they're not supposed to, or they're trying to log into it in a location they're not normally at, or any other kind of suspicious activity. So that identity management is a really big important piece in making all these applications work together as well. So just a very productive application plus you have the back end of it being extremely secure. secure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, and it's those add-on tools like collaboration where the first time you see it you're like, "Wow." Yeah. Like you see the person's name and you see them typing oh, it's in really real cool. time. You so, can, and you see it you can be on your mobile device and see them typing on right, your exactly, mobile device. It's exactly. really cool. Or you can be typing from your mobile device and see it on your desktop. It's just, Yeah. That's so cool. I think that that's going to be like uh, the new aha moment for people yeah. is because uh, I said before um, People are used to having emails on their phones, yeah. right? That's that's been around for a while with the BlackBerry, I think, starting that. Sure. Or was there something else starting? That? It probably was, but BlackBerry was like the mainstream the thing main that really made thing. email work um, on mobile. So have uh, getting emails on your phone's no big deal, but accessing your files is another thing. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that is that you can work on your files, and on top of that you can actually co-author with people yeah. in real time. So it doesn't matter if you're. Um, you, you don't really have an excuse anymore as long as you have if you as long as you have internet connectivity or you have right. source to uh, you you know cellular data mm -hmm. you could be working on from your a coffee shop from from a coffee mm -hmm. shop so if you said oh well, you know I was out uh, mm -hmm. that that doesn't hold up anymore no. another really um, really cool feature about this whole collaboration thing is re a revision control too so you know we were, you know before I was talking about we were, we were worried about whether it was being backed up correctly mm -hmm. which is a big thing and being on OneDrive SharePoint I call it OneDrive SharePoint because it's two things. But um, it, it has backup inherently built into the system. So now I don't have to worry about backup. So that's been taken care of. The growing of the file storage, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to buy hard drives or any file servers or anything like that. And so, and the next thing I get out of it, which is a really cool feature, is revision control. So now um, all my files have like when I save them. And so if I want to go back in time, not just an undo, but if I want to go back into a last saved version, if one you saved, I saved, we can go back in time to any instance in the last wherever, whatever. Right, so if the, the person you're co-authoring with decides to royally mess up your right. document, it's okay. You don't have to go back to a saved file that was in right. Outlook. Uh, you could just click on the re uh, revision history yeah. and pick when it wasn't messed yeah. up. Yeah, oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's a feature you just, oh my God, that's so neat. Um, you know, all the things it's doing is scanning it for viruses. I mean, all that's being done for us now. So like, um, you know, all on the back end. Yeah, we're talking about like the way you might get a malware um, on Tuesday. It was like, but... Um, you know, we're saying traditionally most of that stuff comes through email, but somebody might hand you a, a disk or something. I guess a disk doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, a thumb um, drive maybe. Yeah, thumb drive. But if someone hand you a thumb drive with document on it, you know, that's a potential attack vector. But um, with OneDrive, if, if everything's sharing through OneDrive, OneDrive is scanning all this document for malware and things like that too. So that, that's another level of protection it gives you. It, 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 it's really a new frontier. Yeah. And like... No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, well, I was going to say, I was going to tell a little story on, sure, sure. on uh, Chris uh, Bridges, who works as a, a CIO with us. Um, mm -hmm. And um, uh, Chris, this is like right when we rolled out the group's drive, and um, we were exchanging some documents, and I sent it, he sent me a, an attachment, you know. And I was like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I was like, share it with me. Use OneDrive. Right. And he's like, what's that? You know, and I'm just kind of showing him all the details of it, and he goes... I go, get out of the 90s. This is like the newest thing to do, you know. And so Chris sort of took that idea and said, yeah, we're not living in the 90s anymore. We're going to move forward and, and use the, uh, the sharing ability of OneDrive. So uh, Chris became one of the champions of moving the groups, uh, the files off of the group's drive and getting us to use OneDrive and SharePoint. And you need people like that in your organization that, that believe in it and use it and then want whatever else to use it too. Yeah, it's a hard, uh, hard thing for Chris because I know he loves talking about the late 90s. <laughs> and that was like a golden era for him, so I'm, I'm glad he's on board. Or, yeah, he's now like one of the biggest champions of it. Yeah. And if he, uh, if, if he catches you, um, you know, attaching a file instead of sharing it, yes. he'll, he'll get on. We have some now. police around here that will, will point you out if you don't do it the, the new way, right? Right. right. And, and as you were saying, because he was uh, assigned to be one of the champions, mm -hmm. right? So in, when you do a migration like this, a data migration, yeah. Um, you know, you have to have your champions, and then you have to have like a core set of people in order to push this to make sure that yeah. it's successful. Well, like back to how we enrolled it out is you, you. I, I thought my opinion is you really got to start small. So you start. It's like taking the bite out of the elephant. You can't just consume the whole thing at once. Like a and, pilot group. Yeah, pilot group. Um, we have a client we just did a migra well, a couple of them we just did a migration for, and uh, this one client had a groups drive of 
there must have been hundreds of thousands of documents in there. Mm. And so, um, you know, it's, it's almost daunting to think, well, I got to move all this stuff over to Share, uh, SharePoint is just to take a group like a financial department or like a, and maybe even a marketing department or a sales department and move just their stuff over. And it also gives them an opportunity to kind of clean up their, their past, their history, the, um, or reorganize things a little bit too. But some of us in the office also just theory, just move what they got so they don't get lost. And when it's moved and it's kind of all in still the same place. Mm -hmm. um, but now being at OneDrive, I mean, search is awesome too. So you can type in a, like a partial keyword of a document and boom, it finds it. Right. You know, so that's another really cool thing. And the traditional on my computer now, it's like I kind of have to drill down, look for things. I might try search, but it doesn't really work really well. But search in OneDrive and SharePoint is like on steroids. And there's also... Um advanced analytics on these documents yeah. so if, yeah. you, if you email a document and you want to see how many you can't see who exactly opened it but yeah. you can see like how many people opened it yeah. there's like a number assigned to it there is an entirely new world of analytics in all of this that is like you know I, I, you asked me the other day it's like isn't this replacing the IT guy right yes you know yeah. I was like no I said it's making the IT guy do other more productive things these are the mundane, mundane things that that they shouldn't be working on like the file server and like that's the last thing I want to be working on is replacing hard drives or adding more storage mm -hmm. is I just want it to work right and then now I can work on something that's higher level more more beneficial to the company and so looking at like analytics um, to like analyze the business um, gives us time to go focus on those projects than these things that are difficult to do so the IT you know? guy doesn't have to be bogged down in the weeds solving yes. every little issue that yes. comes across because I you know I know having worked this support desk like there's a lot of issues that can happen in a day and a lot of them are one-offs that mm -hmm. uh, it may be one tiny little bug that requires an entire day of research yeah. to fix um, and a lot of them are just repetitive tasks that you just got to get through yeah. like like when like we were talking about updates mm -hmm. and how um, Windows as a service now just does the updates for you. Yeah, it does. It takes. It just it, run, it works. Right. Yeah. And so, but but now that we're on the um, replace your file server, mm -hmm. your file server just works. Mm -hmm. So you know, as a CEO of this company, how many times have you woken up in the middle of the night thinking about the file server, making oh, sure I have in the past? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now, so now you don't worry about <laughs> yeah. it. And, and even if something did happen to it, you know that Microsoft has a huge team yes. that's going to get it back up. Yeah. There's a book out there, it's called The Big Switch. It talks about moving to the cloud strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and we could reference it in the bottom of this video. Um, it, the concept is, is that um, there was a time and during the industrial revolution that um, when you were manufacturing things that you needed to put your factories near like rivers, places of source of power or mechanical motion. And um, you know, as time evolved, there became like the, like the engine and things like that. Um, the cloud is sort of like that, and I don't, I'm not doing a very good job explaining it, but um, it's like you could generate, it's like the power system. You could generate your own power. Um, you can buy your own generators. You can do all these things and power your house. But it's much easier just to buy it from like your electric company. I mean, they do it as a job. That's their profession. And that's what this cloud stuff is about. It's like there's people that are doing this. They specialize in it. It just works better, and, they have, and, they're, and they're just focused on it. So buying your file server in the cloud is way better than you implementing it yourself. And so even us, the idea of replacing our file server, what it really did is replace a bunch of servers and, and a lot of maintenance that we had to deal with and moving it to, in a sense, 365 or Azure. Um, it, it just, I'm not worried about buying hard drives. I'm not worried about the backups. I'm not worried about like the power going out. Um, I don't have to go build it. I don't have to put it in a data center. I don't have to build a data center. I mean, it just takes all of that, those details and the dirtiness of it all and just make, take it to a higher level. So now it's all about just saving a file, it's like creating a document, sharing it, and protecting it. Simple. So now you can actually do your job in the day yeah. instead of doing all this other yeah. stuff. <laughs> and so from an IT perspective, it just frees your time up to go focus on more relevant things that would really um, use technology to propel your business in a much different way. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like we just scratched the surface of it. I mean, time <laughs> flew by already. Yeah. Um, maybe we could uh, finish this up in another. Um, yeah, we can keep. You know, stream. what we could do is we could talk about the other half of it, or um, or skip around, and we can come back to this too. Right, because we, we still got to talk about the communication piece of this, yeah. um, and all the other features. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll be back <laughs> on uh, Tuesday at two thirty again uh, with our guest yeah. Ingram Leedy, and thank you again for coming by, thank you. And doing this with us. 
All right. And thanks again for uh, all of the people who have checked out our videos. And thank you to our clients whose support allows us to make these videos. Don't forget to click the subscribe button or leave a like. Thanks, everyone.